right, good morning, welcome. I'm Cassidy Goldsworth, this is Tyler Fletcher. You guys all know him as your coach. Um, we are students in the South University's PTA program, so physical therapy assistants. We are here to make sure that you're safe. Um, we are doing a project, it's a community education project, and it is on primary prevention. So what we're doing is we are stopping something before it happens. What we want to do is we want to make sure that you guys understand how important warm up and cool down is to prevention of injury. Um, we will be going um, over that. We're going to take you guys through just a short warm up and cool down. But before that, we do that, I'm going to tell you just a little bit about myself. My name again is Cassidy. I am a 200 hour yoga um, registered yoga teacher. I am a group fitness instructor. I've taught everything from spin to cardio kickboxing. Um, that's kind of how I got into the physical therapy uh, set setting. And that's why I think that warming up and cooling down is so important. I've seen people do all different kinds of things and all of the injuries that can come about with them. And yeah. then here's Tyler. You all know most of me. I'm the coach here, Tyler. Uh, you know, uh, played a little bit of played a little bit of pro, and now I'm coaching with you guys, learning a lot. Um, I've seen. I think warm up and cool down is very important because I don't think people realize the prevention you can do before an injury happens, like we were kind of talking about earlier, actually. So, because I've seen anything you could think of, I've had injuries and I experienced it as well. And now learning about it just kind of solidifies how important you how important this stuff to be is to prevent injuries in the future. So it is vitally important. It really yeah. is. Um, so some of the things that we're going to talk about is for warming up. Some of the things that you do when you warm up that you may not realize is you have your cardiac or cardiovascular adaptation. So you're raising your heart rate, which you guys all know you do immediately. But the, the gradual increase on that can help you um, to sustain your um, sustain your energy for a longer period of time. So again, it's going to keep you going for longer. It's going to prevent that tiredness. Um, tissue warmth. When you have tissue warmth, you have tissue extensibility, which means you're more flexible. It means you can um, load your muscles more. You have more of a plyometric um, rebound to your tissues because they have a, a greater... Um, flexibility. There's joint lubrication. When you warm up properly, your joints are going to want to move easier. Um, we also have muscular flexibility. So again, generally you're able to do more. You can move, move quicker. You can move into different positions. Um, and then for cool down, again, it's that cardio, cardiovascular adaptation. You are bringing your heart rate down slowly. Um, you are preventing um, possibly passing out, feeling like headed, dizziness, um, that could uh, definitely cause injury. So again, that's what we're preventing. We're preventing DOMS. DOMS, if you haven't heard of it, is delayed onset muscle soreness. You guys all probably have experienced it, but just not known the term. Um, that's the buildup of lactic, lactic acid in your muscles, which cooling down and stretching at the end can really help prevent. Um, it also, um, cooling down can ready your body for your next training session. Having that good um, cool down allows your body to be ready your next training session so you can do that better. Um, before we get going here, we are going to um, go through and do our warm up and our cool down. So as we do that, we are going to have everybody grab a ball real quick and then just kind of spread out. We're going to start with just some of the um, exercises. Tyler is going to go through them and kind of show you and I will talk about them each. So we're going to set 45 seconds for each one of these. You would actually want to do about a 10 minute warm up and 10 minute cool down. That's really what the body requires to be properly warmed up and cooled down. Again, prevents those muscle injuries, prevents that soreness, um, and just keep yourself healthy and training for longer. So that's what we're gonna start off here. So go ahead and grab a ball. Grab a ball. Take the ball and just kind of find some space. Find some space. Yep, find space, spread out. So the ball can just kind of sit next to you for now. We'll be using yep, it Yep, let's just sit it down for now. Um, we are going to start with our alternating grass sweeps with dorsiflexion. Yeah, it's probably not this one. So you guys are all prob I'm going to start timers on here so we don't go for too long. You can come close. We don't need much space. Oh. That, not that much space. Yep. So <laughs> go ahead and step out. Bring that toe up in the air and slowly sweep the grass and come all the way up. As you're doing this, you're starting to get your cardiovascular system feeding gravity. So as you bend down, it has to come up. It's a slow, gradual progression here. <laughs> You're stretching out the hamstring. You're stretching out your gastroc just a little bit, but you're actively doing this here. You have about 15 more seconds of this one. Nice think about slow. that nice core stability. Maybe think about a quick little back step. Get a little bit of up, up and down.
down here. Like that. A little few steps in between doesn't hurt. Alright, we're almost there. Okay, next we have our star lateral lunge with arm circles. Here you're going to grab your ball. You're going to lateral lunge, so legs nice and wide. You're going to laterally lunge to the side, and you're going to bring your arms up, kind of in a star. Hold the ball together, and then you're going to come back and do it on the other side. You're going to make sure that you're doing these things bilaterally, so on both sides here. Um, as you do this, you're working on starting to warm up your back. Try and get some good foot movement in here. Again, we have quick movements that we're, we're trying to warm up the heart rate here. Think about that full circle. Swing it up and around. And then come back down. Come back to your center. Couple steps out to the side. Really sit back. Engage your glutes. Engage those quads. Control. Under control. Under control. Under control. Right, just a couple more seconds. Just keep going. Good. Make sure you bend those knees. Think about that stretch on that inner thigh. Again, you guys are going side to side. All right, we're going to switch here. We're going to we're going to put down the ball and we're going to do our inchworm work walk out. So again, you're going to walk out on your hands. This is engaging your whole core. And then you're going to walk your feet in. You're going to walk your feet out. Walk your feet in. Nice, tiny little step. So let's go. Nice and slow, no rush. Now walk those feet in to your hands. Now walk your hands out. You can come all the way up. It's added um, some glute warm up. If you do want to stand all the way up there, it's optional. But you're engaging your core for longer if you do not. Yeah, you can always walk backwards too. So like go forward too and then go back to. That's a great point. All right. Think about doing these with quickness. All right, we have just a couple seconds. Here we are. Our next one is our over and under the gate. I'm sure most of you are familiar with. This is where we're going to start getting our feet going. So think about going over that gate. Think about going under that gate. Here you go. Get those feet moving. Over. Open up those hips. External rotation here. Right. Internal oh, rotation. Right. You can go inside too. So think about going in, which is your internal rotation. Think about going out, which is your external rotation. Getting all of that hip musculature nice and warm. Imagine some cone or something you got to go over, right? Yeah, that's why we call them gates. You have to think about going over or under that gate. All the way up. Inside. Get those feet moving. Start getting your heart rate up. Arms up. I'm trying to alternate in between the lungs. A few steps in between is always yep. good too. A few steps, kind of start warming up those feet. Get the movement. A little light bounces on the face. All right, here we are. Next one. You're going to grab that ball and we have a lunge with a twist. You're going to have a nice deep lunge and you're going to twist over the front leg and then you're going to step forward with your other leg. So again, bilaterally, we're getting our trunk into this. You're working on stabilization. Go. Very nice. Don't forget nice. to breathe. breathe. Yep. Lots heart, of breath. Heart should be pumping a little more now. Yep. Keep your, your core nice, but your um, upper body nice and upright. Think about those extensors in your back, you're extending yourself up and backwards. More controlled on the twist. Less speed, more control. Keep the ball the same height. Don't let it drop. Go over that front leg. Mm -hmm. There you yeah, go. Just nice like controlled. The further you go, the better it is. Yep, we want to have extra muscle control. You have extra stretching. You can take a bigger step. Yeah. And then you have to press up bigger to get yourself up. You can go way down there. I think you're almost about your knee touching the ground. Next we have our jump lunge with alternating ball. So this one is going to be our one that's going to really take our cardiovascular up. So here we're going to lunge and switch. So here, make sure I'm not blocking the camera. Lunge and switch. A little hop, land slowly. All right, don't drop. Way and control it. Slowly. There you go. So it's a nice jump lunge. Control. You're going to do a quick switch. Let's go. Control. Try to feel that spring. Yeah, there we go. Hearing a 
little bit more breath here, which is what we want. Kind of the idea, right, as you build up the warm up, you want to start moving a little more, right? You want to start getting the heart rate up a little more. You should start feeling a little bit of sweat, maybe. I know I do. That should be me, though. Go <laughs> down. Make sure when we lunge, we keep that knee not too far forward. Don't go too far forward. Keep it back a little bit. Try not to there let that go. knee go over your toes. There you go. Keep Very that work good. in the glutes. Keep working, keep nice. working. We're almost there. Almost there. On time. Good job. Nice. So that would be our warm up. Yes, you would do those all for longer and you would add in a few more things, but these are great basics to get your whole body warmed up. Um, again, a slow, gradual warm up leads to preventing injury. Um, so again, it's that tissue temperature. You're getting that um, elastic property. Um, you're preventing those muscle sprains. And then um, really increasing your performance again, reducing your risk of injury. We're now going to start with the cool down. So pretend you just played the game. Now we are we are going on to that cardiac adaptation. We're taking everything back down. We're making sure we're not passing out. We're preventing muscle injuries. That's our big thing here. Um, so we are going to start with alternating single deadlift with touching the grass. You're going to put the ball down and you're going to, and then you're going to switch. So you're going to go down to the side, touch, and switch. Try and keep yourself like a nice seesaw, nice and flat. Time's on. Control it. Don't let the foot turn around or wobble. Try to find the stability in the ankle. Okay. It's wobbly. Go ahead and slow it down. Get the warm one. Warm. It's a cool down, right? We don't need to go quick. Try and get a nice stretch. Yep. Try and keep that head up. You don't want it to tuck into your chest, so yep. keep it kind of neutral. Keep our head above our heart still. Yeah. Looking good, yeah. Good. Try to control that touch, right? I'm not putting all the weight into my fingers. It's just kind of a touch, and I'm back there. Great, we're go. almost there. All right, and we're going to be moving on to our next one, which is our sumo side stretch. So that one's one of the favorites. Yeah, it's a nice, wide, so think you're here, you're pressing into those legs. So you're going side to side, moving that, and let's go. On, there we go. Yeah. Side to side, into that groin muscle. You're pressing down. If you can get in there with your elbows, you can kind of press to the side and side. Think about a nice flat back here. Not too much rounding. Well, maybe hold each side just a few seconds. You yep, know. hold, nice and slow. It doesn't have to be long, but just those are a few seconds for the stretch. You know. Yeah, think about those feet either being forward or slightly angled out, whatever works for your body type. So really think about that tightness that you're trying to stretch out here. Just a few more seconds here, we're going to move on. So, next we have our knee hug, with a, so it's that standing knee hug where we're alternating. So again, think about arching that back. You're stretching out all of those extensors. You've held yourself up for so much. Let's go. Yep, tuck your chest into that knee. Yep, think about, so think about kind of really stretching and then kind of stepping back and bringing that leg forward. Step back, just keep switching. So again, we're still cooling down because we don't want to be totally still. Keep those yep. feet still moving. Nice arch back, really pull it in deep. Yep. Good job. We have about 15 more seconds. So as our heart rate comes down more, we're doing a little bit more stretching. We're cooling off a little bit. Again, we'll put, there we go. Next one is our figure four standing. So you're going to stand, hold that. Right onto that knee and sit back. Let's go. We're going to switch about every 10 seconds here. So try and hold your balance. Hold 
show you this one. So here we go. So you're just going to lean forward and stretch out that quad. We're going to start here. Let's get going. I know you guys see me. It might be tough to go grab that back leg. Yeah, so you're going to spread out those legs. Just start here. If you can't get that back leg up yet, that's okay. Keep it down. Maybe think about just lifting a little bit. And then once you can get all the way in there, you can get down. Try not to stick your belly button out like this. Right. You want to keep it tucked in. You should feel it here more. Yeah, you should get those hip flexors. You're getting that quad. You're also, if you're pressing far enough, you might even get a little bit of that upper hamstring and glutes there. And we're going to switch here in just a second. Actually, we'll stop there. Swap to the other side. We have a nice solid 30 seconds there. Again, with deep stretches like this, you want to do those stretches for a total of two minutes. We have a much shorter time here for, just for presentation purposes. Um, and get you nice and stretched out on the opposite side. Think about pulling that, that chest up off of your knee. And you'll have one side that feels a little tighter a lot of the time. And that's totally okay. Alright, we're gonna do about three more seconds. Alright, very good. We have one last one, and this is where you're gonna actually lay down on the ground. Wait, they are called laying windshield wipers. It's a great way to get all of your hip and trunk flexibility, and you're gonna just move from side to side in a nice smooth manner. Again, this is at your level. Oh, sorry, let me rotates nice and slow. Yeah, so again, this is like your cool down. This is right before you go home. You don't just run and jump in the car. That's a big one. a few minutes. That's a big one. They all get in the car right after. Yeah. Well, I'm done with the knee slam, right? Keep control down, all smooth motion. I'm going to enjoy this one. Yeah, this one is great. Get up if you'd like. So one emphasis, yeah, I think one of the big points I want you to realize too, just about all that before I continue on, is a little short, right? Just because we're closed, we're pinched on time. Obviously, you can add more stuff to that, right? I'm sure. And the thing is, once you start doing this more and more, it becomes a routine. You start noticing this is tight, this is loose. I need to do this. I need to do that. So that's a beneficial thing of having a foundation of a warm up, and like, okay, I can build off this. So we're gonna give you these little brochures. On the back, I'm sure some of you guys have seen them out there, that those are, are those athletic trainers. That is our, your community resource. Whether you guys use it or not, it's up to you. But we have athletic trainers that are games, right? And then it's called Premier Sports Medicine. They are based in Tampa. They've been working here for a long time. They just provide, they work all over the country, all level of athletes, and they're always open to your contact. You're always allowed to contact them. They are your resource. Anytime, even if something happens, you want to go talk to them before a game, hey, this is always tight, what can I do to stretch? Ask for their email. Say, hey, can I email you in a few weeks and if it's not working, can I get more suggestions? Anything like that. They're here to work for you guys. That's why we have them. So you really should take advantage of that community resource. The yeah, contact is on here for you guys to use, if you don't know. we got the number, the email, and you can remember, you can always go to a coach. I'm always here. You guys ask me plenty of questions. I always welcome it, you know. We got Coach Sergio that knows a lot too. Always ask a coach. It's always a good idea to ask a coach. But um, just to review again, just so you guys get it, keep it in your head. Remember the warm up is for that cardio adap adaptation, just to kind of get that blood pumping, that blood moving, that muscle warmth that leads to flexibility, extensibility, right? And think of and their main reason. One of my main points for this is too is static versus dynamic. You all know static stretching like this versus dynamic is like this, right? There's a big difference between that because static. Is can static versus dynamic actually is going to play a neurological kind of game of chess with each other in your head to put it in your terms if that makes sense because if i'm doing static and i go to a quick motion in my brain i'm trying to figure out am i stretching this or am i moving quick so you want to recreate these movements that you guys are doing in the game quick movements reaching out fast not static still right maybe for yoga it might more be okay you know but you guys think about what we're doing you want those quick movements to warm up get the blood pumping and prevent the injury. That's how we prevent the injuries. We get the blood pumping. I'm able to reach this far before I even kick the ball is what we're looking for. When we come out and kick the ball without stretching, that you get injured. Even if you don't notice, it'll happen in a few minutes. 
and you review the cooldown, it's the same cardio adaptation. Bringing us down now, letting the blood flow back down, which is specific to you guys too, keepers, right? We're not sprinting six miles the whole game. It's a shot, it's two minutes of high intensity, high intensity, then we don't do anything. High intensity, high intensity, then we don't do anything. So that cardio adaptation is very important for you guys, and I don't think you guys also really understand, really think about that stuff as part of your warm up. Also, we want to prevent those DOMs, the delayed onset muscle soreness, that lactic acid, to prevent the injury. That's really what's going to happen. You don't think about it. You go home, oh, my back feels tight. You just go to bed. The next day, maybe it's worse. You think maybe I slept on it wrong. It could have happened here when you landed on it or stretched it wrong. The stretching and the warm up and the cool down can prevent that from happening and make you more flexible and just less likely to get injured. Probably about all I have to say. I think it's something you would definitely learn your own body. Everyone's body's so different. You want to take this stuff seriously because I think the more you do it, the more you learn about yourself, and the more injuries you're going to be able to prevent, and the quicker and more athletic you'll become. Do you have anything? No, that's great. Thank you guys for yeah. your time. Thank you for coming out and allowing us to do this. I know that it's not necessarily a fun thing to get a lecture, <laughs> but we appreciate it. So thank you for coming. Thank you guys. Appreciate it.